All right, I think we can we can get going. So thanks everyone for joining. Sorry about the um, the mix up with the with the rooms. So the day, today's call is all about uh, sharing where are we at, where are we going with the new Aragon, and a section at the end also of what are the different ways we'd love for the community to get involved and help make it a success. So I'm going to do um, a quick recap from, from last time, from like two months ago when we last talked, of why are we doing this. Then we'll go a bit more into, okay, what are we doing? What are the user needs we're trying to solve? And what's the main proposition that we're going for? Then we'll talk about how. So how are we going to roll out this new product? And then lastly, let's talk about how can we all make it a success together? So I think it's probably around 20 minutes of, of talking and 30 minutes, let's say, for, for Q&A. So I'm gonna, it's going to be quite a, a lot of content um, and maybe jump over some parts and we can come back to anything you're interested in. in the Q so let's start with why are we doing a new Aragon? And the first thing I wanted to put right at the beginning of the presentation is it's called Aragon App. That's the name. That's the, <laughs> that's the big name. Um, I know that uh, a lot of us have heard the word Zaragoza and now it's starting to be used. Um, that was just an internal project code name that we should now all forget about. <laughs> um, and we want to start calling it Aragon App and being consistent about that because the, the objective of this is in the past, we've had many products with many names. We've got client, we've got govern, we've got court, we've got voice, and it's confusing um, to have so many. What we want to do with all of this is consolidate everything and have a whole new Aragon. Um, and that's kind of the end state that we want to get to. So that's why we're not introducing a new name. So with that out of the way, uh, why are we doing this? This is a recap from last time, so I'm going to go really fast. Um, we know that there's this new wave of DAO creators. They're maybe not the extreme early adopters that built the first 1,000 DAOs. They're slightly more... Um, intermediate level of, of DAO knowledge and they need a much easier solution. Secondly, whereas a few years ago most DAOs were centered around DeFi protocols, now we're seeing this way more diverse use cases for DAOs. So that means that the, the DAO tooling needs to be way more modular for all of these different use cases and we need to be way more of an ecosystem player um, in order to, to serve them better. And then lastly, this point that I already touched on, over the years, Aragon has had many product offerings and we need to take the opportunity to consolidate and simplify and focus our efforts. So what is it that's coming? Again, recap from last time, there's an app, so a no-code interface for setting up a DAO. There are new smart contracts under the hood. We're soon after that gonna be rolling out an SDK to make it easier for developers to, to build on top of the back end. And what we'd like to get towards um, later in the year is this ecosystem of many, many different extensions, many different modules that people have built on top of um, uh, the new Aragon. So with all of that, there's, a, there's you know, some repositioning that we want to do from where we are to where we're going. Um, we want to move away from this monolithic entire solution complex platform and move towards something that's much more composable, flexible, fast to build on. But beyond the product, it's also about changing from being this very solo player to much more of an ecosystem player, going from something that's very complex to use to something that's very easy to use and going from like very abstract use cases to having way more pragmatic, practical um, content and guidance for specific use cases. So where are we in this process? So right now we are finishing the MVP. Um, it's hard to talk about times because you know it's hard to control exactly how long it's going to take us to, to get that ready. But let's say that we're a month or two away from, from finishing, hopefully. Um, then we should move into a technical alpha. 
the objective of that is really around just detecting bugs and making sure that it's ready to go onto testnet and it's not going to be a waste of people's time when they when they try it out in early access. Again, that's something hard to predict exactly how long it will be, depends what we find, but maybe it could be a couple of weeks, let's say. Then we move into the MVP on testnet. This is where we want to see, okay, is this safe and secure? Does this have good usability? Is it providing enough value um, to DAO creators in order for it to be worth us moving it onto mainnet? And it's in this, it's in this stage that we're going to have the early access uh, beta program that is right now open for anyone to sign up for. I'll share the link in a bit. And then after that, we'll move to mainnet. The objective there will be continuous learning, continuous improvement, and getting to the point that it has feature parity with Aragon Client. So all of this can take us um, quite a long time. I think it's, it's a long time before we can talk about the new Aragon kind of superseding uh, where Aragon Client is today, but that's the, that's the long-term objective. So let's um, take a little bit of a step back and go into what is it that we're doing for who? So again, I think we talked last time about this intermediate builder profile that, um, you know, who's going to build the next 10,000 DAOs? And we did uh, some detailed user research earlier in the year. We saw that the people that are going to build the next 10,000 DAOs are the ones that are active DAO contributors today. So they're, they've maybe been, you know, six months in Bankless or ENS. And they're, they're, you know, inspired and they've learned enough in order to become first time DAO creators. And it's this group of people that we think is going to be really the, the mass of, of people setting up DAOs going forward. So when we talk about intermediate, we're referring to their DAO knowledge. So they're not complete noobs. They're also not pros that have been doing this for years. They're somewhere in between, let's say, six to 12 months in the, in the DAO space. And when we talk about builders, um, this could be a range from people that are developers all the way to uh, non-developers, but who are still pretty tech savvy because there's still a lot that you need to figure out. So what are the pains of these intermediate builders today? <laughs> the big topic that was clear from the user research is that there's still so much complexity and confusion in having to set up a DAO. So some of those reasons for the complexity is that there's a huge signal to noise ratio, uh, or there's a very low signal to noise ratio, sorry. So that means there's, there's a ton of information out there, but it's really hard to identify what's the information I need to actually figure out decisions for my DAO. When people do find information about DAOs, they see uh, you know, what's Compound doing or what's Yearn doing, and they see these really advanced um, governance models that are really far ahead of your needs when you're just starting a DAO. So I think that's also a big challenge to, to start in small steps. And the feeling is that also because of the way that DAOs are um, set up, it's very hard to experiment and to, to learn. So where we want to position with the Aragon app is around the DAO framework that grows with you. So you can start simple um, you can easily add modules as you grow, as your needs change over time, as your community grows, as your treasury grows. Um, and you can do all of this evolving in the same platform. You don't have to jump between tooling as you advance. And what we'd also love to do is, you know, help DAO creators learn as they go. So be part of that learning journey and make sure that they feel that they're not alone. They have a whole Aragon community and ecosystem around them to figure it out. I've, I've talked a little bit about the journey there. This is a bit of a high level view and you can see more of it. Um, I'll share the slides at the end if you want to come back to anything. But I'm sure you all know that the, the DAO creator journey today is um, pretty hazardous and long journey. We found that the people setting up DAOs would take um, let's say three to six months in this kind of inspiration phase of reading about DAOs, finding out what's a DAO that's somehow similar to what I'm doing. And then they might spend another three to six months in this active planning stage of how should my DAO work? How should my, what should be my legal wrapper? 
what should be my governance model? How should my tokenomics work? There's so much to figure out and it's really hard to know what's relevant to your case. And then once you get through all of that, then it comes to actually technically setting up your DAO. And that's um, that, that process of having um, a DAO to start with and experiment with is also not really designed to help you learn much. So it ends up being quite disappointing. What we really want to do um, with the new Aragon is help people succeed in this journey and make it easier, make it less friction. Um, so that's where we're, where we're headed. So how are we planning to bring the new product to market? First, let's start by talking about objectives. So where we are right now as an organization is let's start focused on learning and set the foundations to scale later. So our objective right now is not let's get as many DAOs um, you know, using the product and let's grow as fast as possible and let's invest lots in marketing. No, the idea right now is let's start by really understanding our users and their needs and let's learn as much as possible to make the most user-centric product possible. So going into a bit more detail, and I'm sharing these objectives because I think it, it can help the community feed into you know, the, same, the same plans and the same strategy and make proposals which are aligned with these same objectives. So we want to learn how to make DAOs as easy as possible. So think about that, that journey that I just showed. We want to shorten that inspiration phase. We want to shorten that active planning phase. And we want to make it easier um, to do the setup. This is where we're going to focus a lot of our product learnings, all about making it easy. From there, we want to make sure that we have a really clear, unique value proposition. I mean, today we're launching uh, an MVP, a really minimum viable product that we think makes a good start on making DAOs easy. But it's all about learning and evolving that MVP. So what we want to do is, from that learning, get a really unique value proposition that we can communicate what is different about Aragon and specifically, you know, how does the product deliver on that promise? So that's what we want to also start um, making clear and communicating well. And then after that is when we can start to think about scaling. Um, right now, as I said, it's not, that's not the focus, but what we should do is set the foundations. So start, um, start making Aragon a, an attractive partner um, by uh, whether this is through uh, thought leadership or events, finding ways to start positioning ourselves again as a, as a good collaborator. So what are, the, what are the plans that we're working on right now in the immediate term to, to get towards these objectives? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk through this in a bit of detail, and then I'm going to also share uh, what are some areas that we would love help with. So first of all, we have the, the learning plan. So here we've, and we can go more into any of these topics in the, in the Q&A. Um, but what we're trying to do is set up a systematic way to learn how to make DAOs easier, to get the learnings, to capture the learnings. So this is, um, we're, we've got some initiatives around how we're going to recruit the users towards the early access waitlist. We've got the beta program that we'll be running, which has several subcomponents. We can, we can talk about it if there's interest. And we also want to um, set up a way to synthesize all of this information into a learning. And I know that in the community, there's, there's kind of a, a one type of learning wall. Um, we, we also have the idea that we'd like to create a learning wall that first will be piloted um, in the core team. And then once we kind of have good processes established around that, we'd like to make it a learning process that, that all of the community can, can feed into. Secondly is the services plan. So we know that when DAOs come to Aragon today, it's not just that they need a technical infrastructure. There's so many advisory services that they need 
whether it's yeah, community, legal, tokenomics, etc. Et and we think that our ambition is, is not for Aragon to be the one providing all of that, right? We can never be experts in everything as much as all the, all the other great service providers out there. So um, Ivan has been leading this initiative uh, called, that we're calling Host of the Party, which is all around um, matchmaking between DAOs that come in and service providers that are specialized in the things that those DAOs need. You can, you can read, I'll share this, um, this deck and it has links to, to other decks that are out there. Um, kind of a little asterisk under that is we're not planning as Aragon to be the ones providing services on all these different topics. But as part of the beta program, we are going to select a, a small number of DAOs that are just setting up. And we want to create kind of a pilot team around them, people that can help both on the technical and the more downomics side and help those, I don't know, 10 DAOs be really successful and learn from their experience. So we are setting up a pilot team with the express objective of learning mm -hmm. from the DAOs, but not to be scaled as a, as a service provider. In terms of Product marketing, it's really related with that, that learning journey that I showed earlier. So in terms of how are we going to shorten that inspiration phase, we're going to focus a lot on success cases. How are we going to focus, um, how are we going to shorten that active planning stage? We're going to focus a lot on how-to guides. So this is um, yeah. how to choose your block blockchain, how to choose your legal wrapper, how to choose your governance structure. And also product walkthroughs is something we'll, we'll plan to work on. And then the pillar that's probably least advanced right now is the communications plan. But of course, we, you know, we want to have uh, transparent, aligned, build in the open um, communication. So this is something that we'll also be, be developing. So these are the things that we're doing right now in the immediate term. And let's say are kind of the focus of the next uh, couple of months. So just to, to wrap up, um, let's think about how we can all contribute into what's going on. The first thing I'll say is, you know, we're all about making that user journey easier. So if you have ideas and proposals that you want to put to the DAO that make that learning journey easier, then I think that's, a, that's likely to be aligned. And this is the framework that, that we used from our user research, which could be a, a good reference point or inspiration for that. But getting a bit more specific, and here there's, there's two parts. There's one part is, what are we sure that we would love help with right now? And the second side I'm gonna show is, what are the things we think we would like help with um, in a couple of months time? So in terms of what do we need help with right now, um, or let's say in the next couple of weeks, um, and these are things, these are all the things in green that the best way to coordinate it is when we're, when we're ready to put that request out, we'll put it, we'll make a thread on Discord and ask who wants to be involved because um, there'll be different people leading each initiative. So right now it's, you know, it's great if you drive people towards the early access waitlist for the new product. And of course, it's great if you want to participate in the beta yourself, like sign up. I know many of you already have, so that's that's really exciting and looking to, forward to hearing your feedback. In terms of the host of the party, this matchmaking, I know that the that Ivan is talking a lot with the, the DTEC team, and I think this will be a lot of, if we're having lots of new DAOs coming into Discord and a lot of service providers in our Discord, I think there'll be a lot of, kind of shepherding and guiding the conversation help that will be needed. So that's something that's not super defined right now, but I think um, Ivan, will put, Ivan or Brent will put out requests on, on Discord um, in the future, perhaps. Then um, one that definitely uh, we would love to, to ask help with, I think myself, uh, myself and maybe Alex will probably put a call out for this on, on Discord in the next couple of days. I talked about this pilot program where we want to take 10 new DAOs and help them be successful and help them work through all their problems in DAOnomics, not just tech. Um, 
what we're looking for are people who can can join us. Like we'll have the product team there to learn, and we'll have the DAO there uh, in order to be helped. And we need the expert to be the helper and to guide them. So we're looking for people that have uh, been in the core team of a DAO that's set up, and they know really what it takes um, to go through the decisions of yeah legal governance, tokenomics, etc. So we're looking for someone that really already has the experience, very hands-on, and can can answer questions from a lot of angles. But we'll, we'll share more details about that one. The success cases, I think that would be another one that could be interesting to, to um, work together on. That one we haven't kicked off yet, so um, we'll come back on that. The how-to guides, that is moving already. Uh, Carla from the DTEC Guild, she's doing an amazing job um, just kind of starting to set out what that will look like and, and start working on that. Um, and talking with her the other day, she said um, she's, she'd like that to be mentioned to the community today. So I think we'll put something out on Discord as well, sharing a bit more information about that and, and inviting some input and feedback on the version one. So that's the stuff um, that we'd immediately love um, people to get involved in. And then thinking a bit further ahead, um, one thing about this beta program, I mentioned, okay, the pilot will take 10 DAOs, perhaps going beyond that first version, I'm sure we'll learn a lot in there. We could perhaps extend that a bit and start making kind of peer-to-peer -peer cohorts. Like let's get together 10 investment DAOs and let's put them together in the same Discord and let's have Sherpas kind of helping guide them towards resources or people that they can interact with and let's have experts um, that can really help them who are specialized on investment DAOs or specialized on gaming guilds. So I think having that expertise around like really specific use cases and verticals is something we're going to need in a couple months time. So I think it's something to think about either if you are that person or if you are almost that person and you want to specialize a bit more, or if you know people, I think this is a, a really important skill that we, we don't have right now and, and we, we want to find collaborators for. The same on the how-to guides, like we're, we're building this version one, but Carla and I can, we can imagine a future where instead of a general how-to guide, maybe there's a how-to guide specific for investment DAOs or specific for gaming guilds. So again, having people with expertise in those use cases, like practical um, real-life expertise is, is something that we need. <laughs>